Is it odd buying an 11 gen gaming laptop in 2023 where Intel already confirmed the releasing date of 14 gen processor? So I have the Asus Stuff F15 11 gen gaming laptop. Is it suitable for gaming or productivity works in 2023? How was its build quality and overall performance? We're gonna make a deep review on this laptop. So I'm Rahat, you're watching Logical Layers. Let's dig in. Shit. <clears throat> ah, well, at least it ain't your job. Ah, shut up, Arthur. Yeah, your job's starting the fights. It ain't winning them. I can scrap, Arthur. I'm just not good at homework. I can see. Besides, what do you care, Englishman? You've got no time for me. I tried to find your work, but then you're off cutting jobs with other folks, and your boy Sean doesn't... <laughs> This laptop price is about 68,000 rupee in India or $800 in US. So first of all, we see the build quality of this laptop. The Astros claim this laptop is about 2.3 kilograms and its build quality is so strong though it's a plastic body. And the color of this laptop is graphite black. If you see the upper side of this laptop, it's uh, it finished with two different types of texture with triangle shape. And if you see the logo, it's mirror effect logo, which is tough gaming. Though it's not a finger magnet, if your hand gets sweat, there will be some spot, but it can be removed with some soft tissue paper or towel. In this laptop, we can see full-size backlit chiclet RGB keyboard, which can be controlled with Armory Create. We also test the durability of this keyboard. It feels like quite strong. The display can be open with one hand. It is successful in this test, but when open quickly, the body also comes up. That's why you need to open slowly. The display flexibility was also strong. It's normal with a little flexible. In upper side panel, they cut off the edge and branded tough gaming logo. Beside it, we can see some indicator. One of them is laptop power, then charging, hard drive, and flight modes indicator. Here, Asus done a brilliant design. Indicators and logo can be seen even when the display is open or closed. As I oppose, we can see at the left side corner, DC power supply in, RG45 with Ethernet LAN port, HDMI 2.0B, 2 USB 3.2 Type A, a Thunderbolt 4 Type C, 3.5 mm combo audio jack, and left side speaker. In right side, there is only a USB 3.2 Type A port and Kensington lock. Also, we can see a right side speaker. Asus given a big size air vents for air exhausting in this side. On back side, they also given two big size air vents for two fan for air exhausting. We don't know about the middle one, I think for entering air. In lower back panel, they design like polygon shape air vents where air will enter. They even design the power button like polygon shape. Beside it, we can see more air vents for entering air. So as you can see, there is no dedicated SD card ports in this laptop. They can easily fit in right side or left side. I don't know why they didn't. So it's totally Asus matter. If you want to read the SD card, you need to buy a extra half for that. In display section, there is full HD 15.6 IPS level anti-glare display and its refresh rate is 144Hz. Although the refresh rate is 144Hz, there is a question about its color accuracy. Here Asus claiming its sRGB 62.5% and Adobe RGB 47.34%, which is below average of current standard. Nothing else to do here, you have to add up to it. For testing the refresh rate, we log into testufu.com. Before that, we have selected 144Hz from display settings. As you can see, the refresh rate is working so well. Touchpad was so responsive with a refresh rate of 144Hz, it allowed smooth scrolling, zoom in, zoom out. But in my opinion, I think touchpad is a bit small to me. They could give a full size touchpad instead of dedicated button that will increase the size. I just wanted to bring like old fashioned laptop here, but definitely those button was so soft to press. Beside the touchpad, they attached some feature of this laptop. It has dual fan with 83 blade, second SSD M.2 slot, Wi Fi 6 supported. To AI knowledge cancellation technology, it can be controlled aura RGB light. This laptop is maintained military grade standard. DTX Ultra Audio installed as audio controller. 
By opening the lower back cover, we can see two M.2 PCIe slot. They have also given another extra RAM slot. As you can see, there is an empty slot in here. This was set up port in 10th generation laptop, but they removed it in 11th generation. It would be better for consumer if they gave it. User can easily use another hard drive into it. Sound quality was good overall. It seems decent quality to me. The battery has 48 watt hours 3 cell battery which deliver at full search about 4.5 hours of web browsing, 4 hours of video playback and 1 hour of gaming. For power this laptop it has 180 watt 20 volt 9 ampere charger. Let's have a look at the camera section. As you can see it's have a face detection and if I want to show you the raw footage of this camera. So it's a raw footage of mine you can probably guess the audio quality also the video quality it will be okay for the basic meeting online meeting or you can make the overcome with it so the camera quality is not good enough but you can it will be okay for the online meeting they don't even provide the lens protection here very shame of you asus about camera section in tough f15 series forget about camera all the game is real Let's talk about processor. It's 11 Gen 8 series 6 core 12 threads 10 nanometer mobile processor which have base clock of 2.7 GHz and boost clock of 4.5 GHz and 12 MB of Intel Smart Cache. It can be consumed about 45 Watt. In GPU section, it has dedicated RTX 3050 GDDR6 4 gigs of video RAM with base clock speed of 1600 MHz at 60 W. It can be up to 75 W at dynamic boost. Talking about the RAM, it has single channel 16 gigs DDR4 3200 MHz of RAM. It can be up to 64 gigs with dual channel feature enabled. It has Intel M.2 NVMe Gen 3 500 gigs of SSD. Testing with Crystal this mark, we can see the sequential speed of this SSD about 2776 of read speed and write speed is 1602 megabyte. You can see more results below. So that's it for the overview. So let's move on to the performance section. For benchmark the CPU, we tested by Cinebench R23 about twice. During the test, laptop's fan is spinning like storms. In first test, we couldn't find the maximum performance because of bad airflow. Then we make some room underneath the laptop. At first test, we find in multi-core 8774 points and single core is 1423 points. At second test, performance is increased to multi-core about 1976 points. That means the performance can be increased by better airflow. During stress test, we find the maximum clock is with approximately 4.5 GHz and average was 4 GHz. CPU temperature rises up to 96 degrees Celsius. Better airflow with two fans at turbo mode enabled, the throttling level was very low. Because of that, we could find the maximum power of 75 watt. At the average power consume was 46 watt. That means the overall performance of this CPU is quite good. For better cooling system, it took about 4 to 5 seconds for temperature drop from 95 degrees Celsius to 45 degrees Celsius. Nice! For testing out the hardware rendering in Premiere Pro, we export up to this footage at 4K 60fps with maximum rendering quality. It took about 8 minutes for 8 minutes footage. Not bad for the laptop GPU. So let's test out the gaming performance. First of all, we played Red Dead Redemption 2 at high settings. In this, we've got maximum FPS about 145. Average was 60fps, minimum 44fps and 1% low 42fps. Then we played Spider-Man Miles more or less at medium settings. We've got maximum 110 MPS, average 41 FPS, minimum 20 FPS, and 1% low 14 FPS. We couldn't play at high settings because of RAM shortage. Performance can be raised by increasing size of RAM. We've played Assassin's Creed Valhalla at medium settings. In this game, we've got maximum 114 FPS, average 80 FPS, minimum was 21 FPS and 1% low 7 FPS. Then we played Shadow of the Tomb Raider at high settings. The maximum FPS was 122 FPS, average was 94 FPS, minimum 71 FPS and 1% low 59 FPS. We also played all this game like Grand Theft Auto 5 at very high settings. The maximum FPS was 146 FPS, average was 120 FPS, minimum 74 FPS and 1% low 62 FPS.
For playing a sports games, we played Valorant at high settings. The maximum FPS was 224 FPS, average was 172 FPS, minimum 119 FPS and 1% low 68 FPS. So that's it for today. The overall performance of this laptop is not so bad compared to the 12 or 13 gen gaming laptop. So if you want to buy it, so buy it without no doubt. But I'm gonna suggest to you to install dual channel RAM uh, on this laptop to get uh, much more better performance. Hope you see in the next video. Thank you. Goodbye for now.